I want to talk about a man accused of bearing many names, George Santos, a.k.a. Anthony Santos, a.k.a. Anthony Devolda, a.k.a. Anthony Zabrowski, or even Kitara the drag queen, though he denies that last one. But perhaps there's another name that also fits, the name Donald Trump, because George Santos is seemingly taking page after page right out of the Trump playbook. Like Trump, Santos has propped himself up on a platform of lies. He calls it embellishing about his education, his work history, even his Jewish heritage. He doesn't have any. That, combined with questions around his campaign financing, have sparked investigations and calls for the freshman congressman to resign. It's all made Santos, like Trump, an easy target for the classic SNL and late-night treatment. I am George Santos, Miss Devalder, if you're nasty. <laughs> I graduated on a volleyball scholarship from Baruch Atah Adonai University. <laughs> Four years of Michigas, and I am a proud representative for my district in Long Island, New Jersey. I never said I was Jewish. I said I was Jewish. <laughs> the truth is, I'm a part-time Jew. Uh, I am. Yes, in my spare time, I'm the Prime Minister of Israel. <laughs> but I'm not only Jewish. I'm Irish. I'm Scot-ish, and I'm half fish. <laughs> I will never get over the Jew-ish. Uh, like Trump, Santos seems unable to appreciate a little TV mockery. He took his grievances to Twitter, like Trump used to, saying, I have now been enshrined in late-night TV history with all these impersonations, but they are all terrible, capital letters, so far. These comedians need to step their game up. But it's not just the fragile egos and attacks on the media that make the Trump and Santos comparison so uh, valid. Santos seems to be adopting the very strategy that defined Trump's presidency. When in trouble, flood the zone with, you know, excrement. And flooded it has become. The last time I covered George Santos was January the 13th, 12 days ago. And since then, Santos has produced way more than 12 days' worth of scandals, of questions of, yes, more apparent lies, more like 12 years' worth. For example, the freshman congressman from New York had previously claimed his mother was in the South Tower during the September the 11th attack in New York City. He claimed she died as a result of 9-11. But NBC News obtained records showing that Santos's mother wasn't even in the country on September the 11th, 2001. She was living in Brazil. No word from Santos yet on what that's all about. Politico is now out with more information about potentially shady financial practices by Santos's congressional campaign. Politico reviewed his campaign finance records and found 40 charges between $199 and $199.99. An improbability, as Politico notes, considering the vast majority of congressional campaigns never recorded a single disbursement of $199 in the 2022 election cycle. It also seems a little too convenient, considering that campaign campaigns are not legally required to keep receipts for transactions of less than, wait for it, $200. Santos's lawyer declined to comment to Politico, citing ongoing investigations. That comes just hours after NBC News and others reported on an updated FEC filing by the Santos campaign saying that a personal 500 grand loan to the campaign was not, in fact, personally funded, as originally indicated but they gave no clarity on the source of those funds. Elections, lawyers, elections lawyer, excuse me, Brett Kappel, who advises both parties on campaign finance issues, he tells the New York Times there are only two other options, a bank or illegal sources. A spokesperson for Santos's congressional office told NBC News it doesn't comment on campaign or personal matters, but campaign finance isn't the only place Santos is accused of deeply dodgy behavior. A disabled Navy veteran is also accusing Santos of pocketing money from an online fundraiser meant for the vet's dying dog. Richard Osthoff claims that Santos set up the GoFundMe for his dog, but never sent Osthoff the three grand that was collected. Santos has called Osthoff's allegations shocking and insane, adding he won't let distraction stop him. Speaking of shocking and insane claims, MSNBC's Rachel Maddow broke even more Santos news this week, airing exclusive video of Santos claiming that there was an assassination attempt against him. Para uma festa de Réveillon com meu marido, a gente volta à nossa casa foi vandalizada porque a gente estava numa festa republicana na Flórida em, em, em dezembro de 2020. Então é, é aquilo. Eu já sofri vandalismo, a gente já sofreu atentado de vida, é, atentado de assassinato, é, carta ameaçadora, ter que ter polícia, escolta de polícia parada na frente da nossa casa. 
The Rachel Maddow team reached out to Santos's team for more details on that attempted murder, supposedly, but have not yet heard back. And that's not all. In the same video obtained by Maddow, Santos claims that he was mugged with his Santos claims, excuse me, he was mugged with his shoes stolen in the middle of Fifth Avenue in New York City in broad daylight. Still no word from Santos's office or NYPD substantiating those claims. But perhaps the strangest story from the last 12 days centers around whether or not Santos has performed in drag. Now, let's be clear, the reason why people are going on about Santos as a drag performer is not because the drag performance is the problem or anything wrong. With that, it's because Republicans have demonized drag performers in recent months. Plus, Santos yet again can't seem to get his story straight on this one. You see, a Brazilian drag artist posted a photo to social media of herself with another person in drag whom she identified as George Santos. NBC has not verified that photo. At first, Santos said the claims were outrageous and categorically false. That was on January the 19th. Two days later, he softened that categorical denial, telling reporters he wasn't a drag queen, but, quote, I was young and had fun at a festival. Sue me for having a life. Georgie or Tony or whatever you're calling yourself, why try to hide your foray into drag? As RuPaul would say, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Yes, the headlines, the questionable denials, the shocking claims, the outright lies are piling up by the day. But they might not make Santos as much of an outlier as you might think. After all, as HuffPost pointed out, the country and the Republican Party let this happen. The truth is that Santos's serial lies and fabrications make him the perfect fit for the modern Trumpy GOP. Twelve days ago, I spoke to Wajad Ali about the Santos saga. Sa can't speak about the Santos saga, and he's back with me now. Waj is a Daily Beast columnist and author of Go Back to Where You Came From and other helpful recommendations on how to become American, which is now available in paperback. Waj, welcome back to the show. Congratulations on the paperback edition. Can you keep up? with all the Santos lies and controversies. He is now out-trumping Trump in terms of flooding the zone with excrement, is he not? And it takes a lot to out-trump Trump. Well, actually, no, and neither can you, because in your exhaustive list, you forgot one, that he now says he actually had a brain tumor. And when they asked him to provide information, he has yet to provide information that he has survived a brain tumor. So even with all of that amazing research that you did, Mehdi, in your excellent five-minute presentation, even you couldn't keep up with the lies of George Santos, if, in that, if indeed that is his name, the first man on the moon in drag. <laughs> Have a look at this tweet, Wajahat, from comedy writer Josh Gondelman. He says, as a person, I'm a little disgusted with George Santos, but as a writer, I'm completely demoralized by how <laughs> prolific and imaginative he is. Um, you are an author. You are a playwright. You really can't make this Santos stuff up, can you? I mean, on Twitter, there's a running gag that we all take part in, which is what have the writers come up with now? Like, if this was, a, if real life was a TV show, this storyline would be thrown out of the writer's room for being ridiculous. I mean, last time I was on your show, I tipped my hat, right? I said, I admire the utter shamelessness with how this man can lie in, in such a prolific fashion about having brain tumors, being mugged, assassination attempts. I don't know if you, you remember the assassination attempt that apparently he survived, uh, lying about being a drag queen, even though there's photos of him being a drag queen. And then just the shameless lie about his mother dying in 9-11. Yeah, that's I the mean, worst like one. I said before, you know, I'm saying, like I said before, like you and me, as the children of immigrants, if we lied about our report card, we'd probably just hang our head in shame, you know? You could see the sweat coming off our forehead. I could see you probably squirming in your seat live on television. But the man that, the fact that he just does it so openly, it, it, it's almost like I hate to kind of, I kind of admire him, but in like the worst way possible. Yeah, uh, for a lot of those lies, you're like, what? The, the, the dog? Uh, the mother? I mean, lying about your mother's death? Um, that's just. Or your family dying, the your family surviving that, that's, the Holocaust? That's where he out trumps Trump. The Holocaust stuff and the mother stuff, that's out trumping Trump. Let me ask you this, Wajad. Have you ever eaten at the same restaurant eight different times and ended up with a bill every time? of exactly $199.99, because George Santos's campaign claims he did just that. What do you think of this suspicious campaign finance activity? I mean, I just think in addition to lying, he's very skilled at being a, a very precise uh, <laughs> patron uh, who knows exactly <laughs> what he wants. And somehow, and, you know, maybe he took AP math. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> while he, you know, graduated from <laughs> Princeton and was teaching at Princeton as well. I mean, look, the serious aspect of this is in addition to the egregious, and I really want to underscore the shameless and hypocritical lies, Mehdi, and I'm glad you touched upon it, is the fact that he's under federal and local investigation for campaign finance violations. The latest whopper that just dropped yesterday is the question, how did he get this $500,000 that he said was a personal loan but is now not a personal loan? Who gave it to him, right? And yeah. if so, that means he committed crimes. And what does the Republican Party so, say about in addition to these lies that you might have a criminal sitting in Congress right now? And Kevin McCarthy, let's be honest, when given multiple opportunities to denounce him, he says, innocent until proven guilty. Well, you just set up my next question, which was about Kevin McCarthy, who has taken no action on Santos, uh, even allowing him to sit on committees. McCarthy defended his decision uh, mm. on Tuesday. Have a listen, watch. You know, I'm standing by him because his constituents voted for him. I do not have the power simply because if I disagree with somebody or what they have said, that I remove him from elected office. Now, I will hold him to the same standard I hold anyone else elected to Congress. If for some way, when we go through ethics, that he has broken the law, or you know, then we will remove him. But it's not my role. I believe in the rule of law. A person's innocent until proven guilty. I mean, that is a brazen and demonstrable lie. He's not holding him to the same stand as everyone else. He's in the midst of kicking three Democrats, Ilhan Omar, Adam Schiff, and Eric Swalwell, off of committees, while he allowed George Santos to sit on not one but two committees. And he's getting rid of Ilhan Omar, whose crime is being a black Muslim woman who was formerly a refugee. But he has rewarded people who have proactively sought pardons to help Donald Trump in his violent insurrection. He rewarded Matt Gates, Bovert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and he just rewarded Thomas Massey and Chip Roy, these obstructionists, who literally humiliated him for 15 rounds to make him Speaker of the House. That's all fine, Mehdi. See, George Santos, like I argued last time, is right where he belongs in the Republican yes. Party. Why should so, he resign, Mehdi? If so, Donald Trump is still the leader of MAGA, why should George Santos, if that is his name, resign? It's a very good point, but let me just pick up on two things you mentioned. You mentioned Marjorie Taylor Greene, and you mentioned he's right where he belongs. Although technically, if we are to believe Marjorie Taylor Greene, he's not where he belongs, because Greene previously tweeted that drag queens are predators who shouldn't be allowed around children, uh, some vicious rhetoric about drag performers. And yet she's allied with George Santos. She's friends with George Santos, who seems to have had a past, at least dressing in drag. I mean, what's your reaction to the hypocrisy here from the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene? And that's what's infuriating, the hypocrisy, Mehdi, because what Republicans have done and are doing is attacking the LGBTQ community and actually painting a target on them. It's stochastic terrorism, yes. the use of media uh, to target certain individuals that results in statistically uh, random but statistically probable acts of violence. So violence against drag queens, intimidation, threats against educators, against children's uh, hospitals, Boston Hospital, right? They call us groomers. But when they do it, it's OK. When Matt Schlapp yeah. slaps around, that's OK. When Madison Cawthorn you know, dresses in drag, that's OK. When Rudy Giuliani dresses in drag and kisses Trump, that's OK. But then they accuse the rest of us of what they're doing, and it results in violence, which is why, again, we laugh about George Santos. But if you really just step back and look at it, it's a very dangerous precedent and tells you exactly how dangerous and extreme the Republican Party is in allowing George Santos and Marjorie Taylor Greene to have a seat in Congress. And Kevin McCarthy, because he's so desperate for power, says, eh, nobody's perfect. But if you're Elon Umar and you're black and you're Muslim, get out of town. I should point out, you mentioned Matt Schlapp, the conservative Republican activist who's been accused of uh, sexual misconduct by a former Herschel Walker campaign. It's something he denies. Uh, last question to you, Raj. Ted Cruz recently retweeted some selective analysis uh, from YouGov data showing that Democratic voters have a more favorable view of Wicca than Orthodox Judaism, although both parties have positive views of Judaism itself. Uh, Cruz called this particular uh, uh, data point disturbing, kind of trying to imply that Democrats are anti-Semitic ludicrously. But what Cruz conveniently ignores in that same poll is that Republicans have an extremely, extremely negative view of Islam. Satanism and Scientology are the only groups with a lower net favorability among Republicans than Muslims. Muslims and Islam. Waj, you have written an entire book about Islamophobia out now in paperback, as we mentioned. What do you make of the GOP's attitude towards minorities in general and Muslims in particular? Go back to where you came from. 
that's their attitude. You don't belong here. And if you do belong here, you're going to be under our thumb. You better be grateful that you're a guest in our home. But don't dare actually try to achieve the American dream or try to be equal to us. You better know your place. And if you don't believe me, what did Donald Trump say to the squad? What did he say to those four women of color in Congress? I don't care about your opinions about their politics. They are American citizens and congressmen. What did he tell them, Mehdi? Go back. Go back to your own countries. And when he said that in front of his base, they gave him an applause, right? And he sat there and he just relished in it. That tells you exactly what they think about the rest of us. They're going to ban our books, ban our textbooks, don't say gay, ban Muslim, take away women's rights. You are, you can come to America and you can stay here as mm -hmm. long as you know your place and your place yeah. is that you'll be a sidekick or a villain. That's what they think of us. It's not a place that we're going to accept, of course. Wajahad Ali, thank you so much for your analysis. Always appreciate the conversation.